I hopefully not everyone believes that. <laughs> right. Anyway, though, so so then this client, there's really not a lot of hope as long as the mother is reinforcing them feeling yeah, sick. Pretty much. I, and I, I feel horrible about it. And, uh, yeah, because when they came back again, he was, again, all excited. He felt he felt the healing take place because I, and uh, just and as, soon as, mother, as soon as the mother, as soon as the mother, she says, oh, you look, oh, you look so weak. Did you oh, tell him to move out? Yeah, well. <laughs> While you're well, move out. <laughs> I think we have someone that has another question. Okay. Oh, hi. How are you doing, Brian? Hi, how are you, Christine. How are you, George? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Question. Does do you have a question? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. I do have a question. One, two, three. Okay. Does Go. hypnotism help with depression? Absolutely. Absolutely. Basically, depression is just, thank you for the question. Uh, well, there really is no reason to be depressed. Uh, whatever the situation, the circumstance, you can get rid of it like this. It's basically like a label. You just rip the label off, tear it up, destroy it, replace it with a label that says you're happy. And whatever that means well, to what you. About, what about if you're like depressed because of, for a reason, like a, a loss, somebody that you cared about passed or your pet passed away or, yeah, and you're missing them and whatever, there, there, there are reasons to be sad. Really? I mean, you're not going to be happy if somebody, you know. Well, see, I, I, and once again, when you, when you speak about loss and stuff like that, I'm, I'm from a different place uh -huh. because I've been going to the other side since I'm a child. I've uh -huh. been, I bring people to the other side all the time. So you um, understand when Our souls are eternal. Uh -huh. Earth is a very heavy place. It's a very negative place. We come here to experience the negative. Right. When someone passes on, they're going back home to that perfect, beautiful place that we come to. Place come of bliss. From. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it, it, for me, it doesn't make sense, and I bring people there to share that experience. And once they go to the other side, when they come back, they now have a different outlook on life, a new love for life. Uh, the biggest problems they thought they had are now seem so trivial, and uh, they have this awareness that we're going to this perfect place and mm -hmm. that we come from this perfect place. Right. Um, but as far as depression, I mean, yes, you could be sad, but you, was he referring to uh, like clinical depression? Even that, I mean, when people say it's the chemicals, I just gave you the example of um, the placebo pill. If a placebo pill, if you could take that and all of a sudden produce those chemicals in your brain that stopped, that were, weren't being produced, <clears throat> then clinical depression, you know, it's everything is in, in your mind and you can correct anything and everything like this. I, I mean, see I, I, I see it happen it. all the time. Yeah, yeah. I do it all the time. So, and my my um, my clients do it all the time. So you're saying that you're saying that um, that even if they're depressed over a great loss or or uh, an illness in the family or something like that, they can still be a happy person. Absolutely. That's one of the examples. One of the examples I give when um, when I'm teaching the remote healing. Um, because sometimes a person's not going to accept the healing because they need to experience what they're experiencing, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. But there's a way of getting through what you're experiencing. For example, two, two women go to the doctor. Uh, they got the same diagnosis. They both have six months to live. Uh, one woman, <coughs> as soon as she hears that, she's still happy, joyous, uh, spreading love and making everyone feel comfortable and uh, just enjoying the time she has left and making everyone else happy even though she only has six months to live. Then you have another woman that hears the same news. Now she's angry, angry at the world, angry at God. She's, uh, she wants everyone to share in her misery. Misery and, loves company. <laughs> right. So... Who's getting through that in their best possible way for their highest good? The woman the who woman. stayed happy. Right. Yeah. So it's all how you look at it. So well, everything's in our perception, huh? Yes. Just like we perceive things in our lives, and sometimes they're, they're you're right on, and sometimes you're you're mistaken, but you make that part of your reality, and you make yourself miserable. That you know we do that to ourselves. Most people get in their own way. Yeah. We get and that's it. when the two day workshop, uh, I like to, in all my clients, I like to teach them to get out of their own way. Yeah. And it's usually instant like this. Yeah. Cause sometimes we are our own worst enemies. Yes. Most people are. And we like to blame other people for the, the downside in our lives. When meanwhile, we brought ourselves to wherever we're at, we brought ourselves there. Right. 
you know, we, we, we are the keepers of our own lives. Yes, I th think we have another. Another question, come on up. Thank you, sorry to be hogging the mic here. Don't worry about that, just okay. this question. Um, Wait, do you, you have another question? I do, Okay. please. Uh, I know that you're, you're going to be doing a channeling workshop soon. Yes. And I'm really curious how one can make sure that it's not Great Aunt Matilda coming in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, yes, I do. Thank you for the question. Um, how do we make sure? First, I give you the suggestions before we even begin. So you're getting your you're hypnotized several times before we even do the channeling work. Now when I bring you, when I separate your mind and I bring you to those higher areas, it's only positive and it's the higher evolved entities that we're going to. So you may see Aunt Matilda on the way up and you could say hello and share your love and maybe she has information for you, mm -hmm. but we're not going to take her in. I'm going to go to the higher evolved, the spirit guides, the ascended masters, um, That's who you are direct to be channeled. Because just like on Earth, you have different levels of education. You have, you know, you have human beings that are in kindergarten, high school, right. college, college professors. Each one has a, a different, different amount of knowledge yes. and level. Same thing with the other side. The, same thing with the other dimensions. There's different levels of intelligence, of understanding. Now, of course, in those higher realms, there is no ego. And when you ask for the, and this is how I usually phrase it, uh, the most loving, most caring, brightest, most intelligent entity that is near you now, you know, to come forward, there's no ego. No, they're not rushing, oh, I'm smarter than you. I'm, no. <laughs> the smartest one will come forward. The one that has the information that you need at that time will come forward. And all the other entities will know that. Yeah, they all, it's all known. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question, by the way. And of course, if anyone else in the audience I has a question. I was just about to say that, yes. Were you going to say that? Yes. Are you a psychic? Yeah, sometimes. Oh. <laughs> oh, we have a question, I think. There we go. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you again for the workshop. It's oh. a wonderful workshop. Thank you. Um, everyone will benefit from it. Um, my question is, right now, people are trying to raise their vibrations, mm -hmm. and, um, and in doing so, trying to release karma. And I think maybe people would be interested in knowing how um, you can use hypnosis to release karma. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank That's, you for the question. Yeah, good question. I didn't even think of that, but go ahead. Well, karma is a very big deal. Yeah. Well, <coughs> you say yeah in a different way than I mean it. Uh, I don't like karma. You don't like it, but no. it exists, though. Well, we it does, it, right? because people believe it, they're told it, and they think that they have to continue to move along those lines. What I do in the two-day workshop as well is I absolutely release every single person of any negative karma. And anyone that's ever done anything to them, we release them of any negative karma. Uh, I'll give you an example, actually. There's um, uh, another hypnotist friend of mine, I uh, met her a few years ago, and um, her boyfriend at the time, uh, they went and they did a uh, past life regressions together. And it was discovered that they were husband and wife in, three, in their three previous lives. Wow. And, um, and she wasn't happy in this relationship. It wasn't really going well. And, um, and you know, why are you with it? Well, we have, we have uh, karma to work out. And what, are you, what are you talking about? Uh, she... Uh, her boyfriend was her husband in the last three lives. In all three lives, he murdered her. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, and then I say, well, I guess, you know, she's going to work through that karma even if it kills her. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't happen in this lifetime Well, now. <laughs> thankfully, she understands now when I had a, a deeper conversation with her that you don't have, even if there's a... Uh, because you'll know there's karmic contracts that are written into before you come to earth. Before you're born, there's people that make agreements with, well, you did this to me in this life, so let me do this, and then you'll benefit. Yes, that happens a lot, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to happen. And w when you come to earth, there is enough suffering, whether you're 10 years old, 20, 80 years old, it doesn't matter. Anyone who comes into my path, my goal is to teach them, allow them, program them never to suffer again. There's no reason for it. You've paid your debt. So when you come to the two-day workshop, your karmic debt is fulfilled. You don't, you're completely released of it. And I take you to the other side to be released. 
you which give your, means you, that you forgive every single person that's ever harmed you, mm -hmm. and most importantly, you forgive yourself. yourself. Right. Clean slate. And I also bring them into the future to forgive themselves for anything they may do in the future. Everything's a learning process, and everything's a learning experience. Mm -hmm, yeah. So there's no reason to hold on to that karma. No. And, I, that's, and it's very and it's so beneficial on so many levels. Uh, when you when you finally have that realization that you don't have to be bound by karma, just like how many people are in bad relationships, and they stay in those bad relationships. Why? Oh, because of this. Because no. Hmm. If you're not happy, be happy. Right. You've had enough suffering. There's no reason to suffer. Assess. And um, you know, since I was born, I o I've always felt other people's pain probably more intensely than they've actually felt it themselves. Now, thankfully, I know how to turn it on and off, which other uh, empaths, they don't know how to do that, which I do teach how to do that well as well. I oh. think we have another question. Yeah, Dan. Hi, Dan. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, hey, Dan. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'd like to know if there's a relationship between hypnosis and dreams. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. I, in a relationship in which way? Well, <clears throat> uh, in a relationship which way? Well, uh, you know... Have if, you had any you, dreams that you wanted to... You uh, can't ask a man about his dreams on well, I don't know. He's asking about dreams. Oh, so. he did. Uh, you opened, uh, you <laughs> he opened brought up the, the door. subject up. You opened up the door. Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> oh. No, you opened it up. You asked me that trick you, question. You know what? <clears throat> Someone opened the door. Yeah. <laughs> so let me answer it then. Yes. I think. Try. Okay. Go ahead. You so will. the relationship, first of all, Hypnosis is a natural state of mind, and every single person goes through several stages of hypnosis several times a day. Um, for example, if you're driving on the highway uh, and you miss the exit, three exits later, so where am I? How did I miss my exit? You were in a state of hypnosis. Yeah, I've done that. Um, if you ever looked for it, you do that a lot, don't you? <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> well, I'm psychic as well. Um, if you're looking for a condiment, like you say ketchup, mustard, the salt, and you're looking all over, you can't find it, five minutes later, you open the right door, it's right there. Right. State of hypnosis. When you're watching TV, when you're watching a commercial, you're hypnotized. Um, Especially when you're saying, oh, I want that. <laughs> exactly. Now, every night before you go to sleep, when you're, when you're in bed and you're, you're falling asleep, you pass through a state of hypnosis right before you go into the sleep state. Now, I, th I, I don't know if you're... In the dream state, uh, which I teach dream control, I've been doing it naturally since I'm a child, you can correct anything. Because you're in your unconscious, your subconscious mind, you can correct anything about yourself. So when I teach the dream control, okay, when you're sleeping and you're dreaming, you're able to correct any issue that you may have. You're able to give yourself suggestions. And it works like this. As long as you believe it, expect it, know it. So in hypnosis, you can give, your, you can give yourself suggestions in self-hypnosis. And while you're sleeping, when you become aware that you're dreaming and you take control of that dream, you can give yourself the suggestions that you need to heal. Did I answer it somewhat? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, how about, you know. Do you have you another go, question? Yeah, well. Yeah. Or is it related? Is uh, it? It, somewhat. Okay. If, okay. if you're going to, going to sleep and you have a problem, you, you're trying to think of how to uh, talk to someone, you know, <coughs> and. and you go to sleep with that problem in your mind, mm -hmm. and you wake up and you have the answer. You, is yeah. That, you know, you have the way. You slept on it. Yeah, you slept on it, right. Well, that's a part of it. That's a, that's, that's a good technique to do. If right. you do have a question or, um, let's say, a dilemma, you have some sort of thing that you have to figure out, you give yourself that suggestion before you go to sleep, Nine times out of ten, when you wake up, you'll have the answer. Something it'll And sometimes to you. you'll dream about the whole scenario, and you'll dream about uh, the problem that you have and the, and the solution. You'll dream about several different avenues of that solution. Wow, that's interesting. So that was what you're saying. Is Thank you for the question. Is if you are going, you're on your way to sleep, you're lying in bed, and you're getting very dreamy, and then you make a suggestion to yourself of, Try to think about this particular... Don't try. Don't try. Oh, just do it. Yeah, of course. Okay. So think about this dilemma and how to solve it, and, and then you drift off to sleep, and the next morning you might have an answer, huh? 
Yeah, or you may have it while you're sleeping in the dream and you'll have the exactly what to do. Now with the dream control, I teach you to solve your problems in the dream state, to be completely conscious and aware that you're asleep and that you're dreaming and you'll find the answers. And it may, co it may even come from, you know, it can come from various sources, but it will come to you. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, there are times. One of the things I like to do in the dream control, and I, I teach everyone to do it, is fly. Flying, I just love to fly. Yeah, I can imagine. That's, I, I think I've done that once or twice because you feel. I do it every night. Yeah, every night you fly? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I couldn't help that. <laughs> oh, I think we have another question. Okay. Yeah, Johnny, hi. How you doing, guys? Hey, now listen. how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Don't start that. <laughs> well, I can go on for hours, please. This now is Staten Island. In, uh, in hypnosis, do you go into REM? Rapid eye movement? Whatever that, that's why I'm asking. Well, rapid eye movement is REM, and yes, uh, I'll, have, I'll have some uh, clients or people at the workshop that their eyes are going all over the place. But if you're talking about dream, mm -hmm. uh, no, it's not, you're not dreaming while you're hypnotized. While you're hypnotized, you do not go to sleep. Unless I guide the client to be in a sleeping state, mm -hmm. and then I could do that as well. But more often than not, it's when you're hypnotized, you're not supposed to go to sleep. If you go to sleep, you're no longer hypnotized. Mm -hmm. Unless the hypnotist guides you to go into a natural sleep state and still get the suggestions. And a lot of times, I'll, I'm, I'm making a CD now, a dream control CD, where I actually guide whoever's listening to the CD, into a sleep state, and then I, they're still listening to me, and then I guide them to control their dreams and then do whatever they need to do. I'm coming up with a whole series. Maybe I shouldn't mention that, so, so if someone don't take the idea. Oh, well, I'm sure that, that they won't have the information you have, but in the meantime, Thank you. though. Thank <laughs> you. That's very true. Yes. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, though, so, so you can... Can, oh, can I'm sorry, wait, wait one second. Did we answer your question? Well, that, yes, that's why I asked, because I, I heard it before, so I was curious. Oh, okay. So it came to mind, but thank you. That but normally, great. though, with hypnosis, if you're going for a specific uh, thing to correct, you're not supposed to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So if you're sleeping, you're not, like I have a, a series of hypnosis CDs, and I instruct the people not to go to sleep when you're listening to it, but I guide them into a deep sleep after the CD. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, you. Dr. Thank you very much. So now let's get this straight. If you're guiding the person to a dream control state, mm -hmm. okay, now when they get to that dream control, in other words, they can dream about whatever they want. Absolutely. Uh, and I'll discuss it. If they want it. to bring somebody into their dream, Absolutely. like a, a, a deceased relative or friend or something, yes, and they and can dream about that person, talk to that person. And there's several ways of doing it, and there's there's infinite amount of possibilities, reasons, there's infinite amount of levels of everything that we're talking about, mm -hmm. and we're speaking about. Um, when you're dreaming, if you're controlling your dream, you can control all the characters. You can bring in someone, you can bring in their awareness, someone who's passed away, or you can actually have the person that has passed, their soul, their awareness will come inside of your dream and you can communicate with them that way. It'd be like a visit. Yes, an absolute real visit, yes. And then the other thing that I do is when I separate, in hypnosis, separate your mind from your body and I take you to the other side, you're there face to face and you know how real it is. Mm -hmm. So. There's several different ways of doing that, mm -hmm. if they're that's, available. That's interesting. That's if they're interesting. reborn already, then they're obviously not available. I guess, but um, well, well, as far as that, it's if, yeah, as far as that concerned, though, but most people aren't reborn right away, right? They're, well, it depends. Depends on what? Different things. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, suicide. They might want to come back right away. Not that they want to. They have no choice. They ha you have to come back. You have to come back yes. to make up for what you did. Not make up, but re you, you, how do I put it? Our souls are eternal. Eternity is a long time. A mm -hmm. hundred years on the other side is a blink of an eye down here. Sure. So when we're there, we, we're, we're like uh, Superman and Supergirl. Mm -hmm. Superman, Supergirl. Right. Superwoman. Right. Okay. And uh, we'll choose the most difficult paths, the abuse, everything else, and we'll go in front of the council several times before they say, sometimes hundreds of times, and they say, no, this life is going to be too difficult for you, and you have to map out. And finally, when it's all up to you and what you want to experience, and they'll let you do whatever you want. Um, but when you, now, it's like playing a game, and you know, you, you, you get knocked off the course, or you lose all three, you know, you have three lives, let's say, in, the, in a game, and 
it's only like two seconds. You want to jump right back in and do it. But with, with, uh, with suicide, you really have no choice. You have to be reborn to experience those things. But some, you, you get to go to the other side, but you don't get to stay there. And you have to re-experience those things that you so, experience. So in other words, you have to do it over again. Yes, <clears throat> which I'm also working on eliminating. Because you get rid of, you get rid of karma. Um, you can still make that next life. You can have the most horrible experience just in a split second and still get all the, all the, uh, the learning from it. You don't have to, most people uh, choose to come to Earth to experience the negative. Let's say they have different things, different obstacles that they choose to experience. And they choose it because when they go back, they are on a higher it's, level. Yes, they, that's part of evolving your soul, right. to overcome these obstacles and these negatives, because mm -hmm. we come from a perfect place. Mm -hmm. So now, if someone chooses to come to Earth to experience um, a broken heart, mm -hmm. now, Sometimes a person who has a broken heart will go into another relationship that they know they're going to get a broken heart and they'll keep getting that same broken heart over and over. Or some people will suffer with a broken heart their entire lives. You don't have to. You ever have, a, you ever have your heart broken? Of course. On yeah. several occasions, I well, have to admit it. Okay. Everybody well, plays the fools like the song says. Well, a broken heart is, it's horrible. You, you, you can't oh, eat, yeah. you can't sleep, you it's can't like do this, you can't do that. It's like losing somebody to yes, death. Yes, yes, it yes. It is, it, it is. And, um, you know, it's just, but how long do you have to hold on to that? Only as long as you want to. And, um, and I'll do a session that call, it's called Mending a Broken Heart. You'll never think about the person again, never have no feelings, no emotions. And actually, if you run into the person, not only will you have no emotions, but you'll laugh hysterical on the inside because you'll see the person with clown hair, clown nose, clown feet. Yeah, you see you a whole music. different perspective. Yes. So there's no reason to suffer with that. Right. So you can experience it just like you, you got a paper cut. You ever have a paper cut? Absolutely. You know what it feels like? Yes. Do you have to have it again to know what it feels like? No. Okay, same thing with life. You don't have to suffer. So that's my goal is to let, I don't want anyone to suffer at all. No, I don't either. People, animals, anything, I don't want to so, suffer. There's no reason for it, and that's my goal. So even though you're coming here to experience it, you could learn your lesson like this, mm -hmm. for your highest possible good. Mm -hmm. Even asthma. Um, asthma, for example, uh, I always tell people it's not a real thing. Well, nothing is real anyway. Any kind of disease or any sickness, ailment, it's all in the mind. Yeah. So uh, I'll have clients that fill out the intake form, and they put down that they have asthma. I'll tell them it's not a real thing. And once I and I give them, I tell them, in hypnosis, I'm going to be guiding you into a deep state of hypnosis, giving you healing suggestions. As long as you accept those healing suggestions, the asthma will be gone. Now, when I say it's not a real thing, people will go to the doctor. So people are born with asthma. People go to the doctor. He diagnoses it, gives you medication, prescribes treatment. Some people suffer their entire lives with asthma. Some people die from asthma. Yeah. But it's not a real thing. Well, what makes you say it's not a real thing if someone well, can die from it? Well, Okay. When I tell a person it's not a real thing and, I, and I'm bringing them into hypnosis and I say, as long as you accept the healing suggestion, you won't have it anymore. I have several clients that after that one session, they never have asthma again. Wow. And the, the most severe cases, uh, and actually, I think every person in my family, on my father's side, my mother's side, everyone has asthma. How about I was born things with like asthma, uh, right? high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes? Before you ask the question, anything and everything in the mind. And you can correct anything and everything like this. And that's, the one, that's one of the things I do in the two-day workshop. You can come with the most serious illness, ailment, and you could absolutely eliminate it all on the first day like this. And then after the second day, not only are you helping yourself, but you're helping every single person you know. And people you don't even know, you're helping them tremendously from which, that two-day workshop. Which is good for the karma. <laughs> But we absolutely get rid of any negative karma. There's no reason for it. So eliminate karma at all. You know, a lot of people, even they hold on to that. Um, you know, instant karma is going to get him. Oh, he did this to that person. You know, he's going to get his. Or I teach, don't even give any energy to that. Do not give any energy to that. Just let it go. Yeah. Well, if people do, whoa. If people do. Is that going to be on TV? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, if they do, um, uh, you know, uh, believe that they are going to pay for something that they've then they done, will. then they will. Yes. Yeah. And it does happen. Absolutely. Yeah. So if that's true, why not think the positive? Why not, you know what? Forgive. Forgiveness erases everything. Forgiveness heals everything. Yeah. 
forgiveness and it than forgiving you yourself. Up too. It frees yourself. You free yourself to accomplish greatness. You free yourself to enjoy life, to be happy, and not be bound by any kind of negative uh, karmic retribution. Right. There's no reason for it. Yeah. Forgiveness. Yeah. Very powerful. Yes, yes, it is very powerful. And we do that in the two-day workshop. Well, that's good. That's great. That's great. So thank you. So just briefly, because we only have a couple of minutes left. We only have a couple uh, of minutes left. That's right. Okay. Uh, just, just enumerate what workshops do you conduct now. The, the two-day healing workshop and evolve your soul training. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we have? The astral traveling training workshop, the channeling uh, workshop, dream, dream control dream. workshop, the aura workshop. Um, I teach you. Do you see auras? On occasion, yeah, I do sometimes. Yeah. Well, I teach people how to see them. I can see energy with their intention, like this: the colors, the brightness, everything. Um, I don't have a whole bunch of workshops. I, you can go to my website, adepthealer.com. Uh, I have upcoming uh, workshops, information, tons of testimonials, especially from the two-day workshop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I did have. To, I do have to say, I did enjoy the two-day workshop that I attended. I got a lot out of it, learned self-hypnosis, which comes in handy. I do practice it now and then. Not every day, but sometimes if I'm sitting quietly in my living room and I think about it, and I'll just go into something, mm -hmm. you know. But and most of my students, they'll do it every day, all day, as wow. much as they can, yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. That's yeah. good. I'm going to try to do it more often. Very you know? healing, very powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's very good. But in the meantime, I want to say thank you for tonight. Well, this has been a very, very interesting conversation, and all, you had a lot of interesting information for us. And thank you. Thank for, you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, as I, I said in the beginning. Yes, thank I enjoyed you. it too. And we'll have to do something again sometime. And we could talk about dogs and cats. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Thank I you. love dogs and cats. <laughs> I know. Okay. Good. You're an animal person. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Take care. Good night.